Good morning or afternoon or whenever it is that you're watching this. How are you today? My name is Miss Jenna from the Chippewa Falls Public Library and I'm here to share with the fourth through sixth graders what's in your grab and go bags this week. Before we get to that, I'm going to read a snippet out of Circus Mirandus for you. This book is available to check out from the Chippewa Falls Public Library and it fits in with this week's Page Turner Adventures theme. This book is by Cassie Beasley and I'm going to start at chapter four. So we have met Grandpa Ephraim so far and the main character's name is Micah. Chapter four, impossible letters. Grandpa Ephraim opened the drawer of his bedside table to reveal balls of crumpled paper. Micah uncrumpled them one by one until the bed was covered with letters, letters made up of impossible words. Light bender, the letters said. Circus Mirandus, they said. And they said one more thing, one very crucial thing. You promised me a miracle. Micah knew about the promise the light bender had made to his grandfather. It came at the very end of the story, and it was one of Micah's favorite parts. But it was only a story. His grandfather placed his hand on top of one of the crinkled sheets of paper. It took me quite a few drafts to get it right. I don't understand, said Micah. Circus Mirandus isn't real, Grandpa Ephraim said quietly. But it is. A smile was tugging up every wrinkle of Grandpa Ephraim's face. It wasn't a teasing smile. Micah stared at all of the letters spread across the crocheted blanket. If it's really true, Grandpa Ephraim laughed his blub blub laugh and beckoned with one arm. When Micah reached for him, he pulled him close in a weak hug and wheezed in his ear, It's the truest thing ever. I'm so sorry I never told you. Micah hadn't realized there was a fist in his chest until his grandfather's words made it unclench. Grandpa Ephraim would never lie about something so important. And that meant... That meant magic was real, and more importantly, a real magician had made a promise to his grandfather. Micah wouldn't have to be alone. The lightbender could save Grandpa Ephraim. The world would go back to being the way it was supposed to be. Micah hugged his grandfather so tightly that his arms hurt. Everything's going to be all right, he said. It is. Grandpa Ephraim lay back on his pillows and nodded. I think it might. I finished the final draft of the letter last night, and a messenger came for it. What? It was the most astonishing thing. I wish you could have been here to see it. I had no idea how to get the letter to the circus, but the messenger flew in through the window a few hours after I had finished writing it. Wait, did you say flew? Grandpa Ephraim's grin widened. Yes, it does sound strange, doesn't it? Apparently, the light bender uses a parrot for his mail. She said she preferred to take phone calls, actually, but I'm really not sure how that would work. I should have expected something fantastic. Phone calls? Micah rubbed at the back of his neck with one hand. This? It's so... Wow! He looked around the bedroom and realized that everything had been transformed. This wasn't a room where Grandpa Ephraim had been sick. It was a room where he was going to get well again. Even the afternoon sunbeams that shone through the window seemed brighter. And this mail parrot? She was going to give the light bender your message? She was going to tell him to come here? Yes, Grandpa Ephraim said. He bent over and coughed a couple of times. Micah started to pass him a tissue from the box on the bedside table, but he waved it away. I hope so, he said. I hope that he'll agree to help us. He has to. If this was real, and it just had to be, then the light bender would have to help them. Micah didn't see how he could refuse. In Grandpa Ephraim's story, he was a very powerful magician, a good magi magician, and he had promised. 
I can't wait for you to meet him, Grandpa Ephraim coughed again. The messenger said Circus Mirandus was in La Paz right now. Where? It's in Bolivia, so I'm not sure. Glub, glub. Micah handed him a tissue, and this time Grandpa coughed into it. Do you think it will take long, Micah asked, for the light bender to fix you, I mean? Aunt Gertrudis would have to move out of the spare bedroom to make room for their guest, he decided. She would be glad to be going back to Arizona without Micah anyway. She'd been saying just the other day how difficult it would be to find room for him in her apartment. What? Grandpa Ephraim was coughing so hard that he barely got the word out. Are you okay? Club, club. I think I need... Grandpa Ephraim's face was turning pale. His eyes were clenched shut. His mouth was opening and closing like a fish's, and all of his words had turned into nothing but glub, 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 glub. Micah was on his feet in an instant. Grandpa, what should I do? That awful, dying kettle sound was lasting for much too long. He was about to ask if he should fetch a cup of water or the breathing machine that the doctor had given them, but his hands were on his shoulders, but hands were on his shoulders, jerking him away. Aunt Gertrudis's nostrils flared out, she said, get out, getting him excited for no good reason. Her eyes landed on the letters spread out on the bed. They narrowed into slits. This again, she hissed. I should have known. Micah didn't know what possessed him at that moment, but it was something with a lot of bravery and almost no good sense. Instead of leaving, he ducked around his aunt and made a wild grab for the letters. He managed to snag one of them, but before Aunt Gertrudis caught him by the back of his t-shirt. I said out, she shouted, go to your room. She snatched at the letter in his hand and she shoved him toward the door. Micah's fist was closed too tightly around the paper though. It ripped and he stumbled out into the hall, nearly colliding with the wall. The door slammed behind him and the lock clicked. Grandpa Ephraim, he yelled, are you all right? Aunt Gertrudis, let me in. Nobody answered. Micah slid down the wall and sat, staring at the door, wishing that it would burst into a thousand splinters. The silence from the other side of the room seemed to last forever before he heard the breathing machine turned on. The grinding sound of it made him feel like he might never be able to move from that spot again. The half of the letter that he had managed to rescue from Grandpa Ephraim's room trembled in his hands. Micah pressed the creases out as best he could, running his fingers across the words over and over again until the paper began to feel soft. You have to get up, he told himself. He had to be ready to meet the light bender when he came. He had to make sure that Grandpa Ephraim got his miracle before it was too late. So that is one chapter out of Circus Mirandus by Cassie Beasley. I hope that intrigues you enough to check it out and read more. And now let us see what is in this week's grab and go bags for you. Let's see. We have the direction sheet for a DIY play circus. Everybody loves to play. And this time, you get to make your own toys. So on your direction sheet, it shows you all the contents that you have in your bag and things that you will need at home. So things you'll need at home are scissors, glue, tape, something to color or paint with, crayons, markers, watercolors, colored pencils, and then anything else you can use to decorate your very own circus tent and circus animals. I've also included further adventures, including a few links to virtual content, as well as activities you can do without a computer or device. And then on the back, there is a list of books that are related to this week's theme. It's not as long as last week's <laughs> book list. There's some really great choices on here. The one and only Ivan, the Bear's Surprise, 
DIY circus lab for kids. I really recommend borrowing that one. All right, let's see. Let's take a look at your templates. So you have copies of these different circus animals and they get turned into standing toys. So there's an elephant and a monkey, a lion, a seal, and a dog. So you'll color them, cut them out, and you'll cut out the bases, and you'll attach them. And I'll show you how to do that in a minute. And then there's a couple of coloring sheets and a word search as well. There we go. And then the coolest thing, I think, part of this week's activity for you fourth through sixth graders is you get to make your own circus tent and it turns out really cool. So you have the top of your circus tent here and the sides and the bottom and a flag. And I'll show you how to put that together in a minute as well. You know, when you go to the circus, most circus tents are red and white, but you can color them any color you want. You can also use the different items that we've included in your bag to decorate the inside or the outside of your circus tent, as well as um, your circus animals. So every bag comes with a little bit of pipe cleaner for your flag, a combination of felt and yarn, and tissue paper and that you can glue on to make a collage or to decorate the animal's outfits or anything else that you think of to make your circus tent and your circus animals all your own. All right, here we see the circus tent that I made. Here's the top. Let's see who is inside. So there's the dog and the lion and the monkey and the elephant. Aren't they so fun? You can color them however you want or like I said you can use the stuff in your grab and go bag to decorate them and make them unique and all your own. So here's the circus tent all put together. And you can either glue the top of the tent on or you can leave it loose to store your circus animals and to play with and put on a little circus animal show. So there is that. I'll put these back off to the side and they can watch me put together the last, oops, the last animal. So the last animal I have not put together yet is the seal. So here I've cut out the base parts. And the base part, you'll see, has these two dotted lines for you to make a little snip. Boop, snip, snip. And this part you see also has two little dotted lines. And I'm going to snip and snip those as well. And now I'm going to cut out the seal. Now that I have the seal all cut out, we're going to put them together. I'm going to recycle that paper. So for this, you'll need tape or glue stick or school glue. And so this part is going to get glued onto that part. So I'm going to put a little bit of glue on the bottom of my seal. Just like that, and then I will attach that to the base, straighten it out a little bit, there we go, just like that. And now I'm going to take 
the long strip of paper and connect it to the bottom of the seal. So where you've got the little slits you cut, you're gonna insert one inside the other and gently push up. So you'll see that it is connected that way. And then wrap and twist it around to insert the other slits inside one another and gently push up. There we go. And if you think this will be sturdy enough for your seal, go ahead and leave it that way. Otherwise, you can tape or glue down the little tabs so they don't come out. It doesn't take much little glue. There we go. Just like that. Just a little dab of glue. Ah. And now the seal can join in the circus friends. <laughs> If you want to make them a little sturdier, you know, they are a little floppy and flimsy, feel free to tape a toothpick up and a toothpick down on the bottom as well to give the bottom a little bit of weight and then to make the animals not quite so floppy. <laughs> or if you've come up with any other idea of how to help them stand up a little better, that works too. All right. Now I'm going to show you how to put the circus tent together. Move all those over to the side. So the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to color or paint all of the different parts of the tent. And like I said, a lot of tents are red and white, but you can use whichever color you want. And you'll notice on the inside of this tent, it's colored, but it's not printed on both sides. So I just ended up coloring pretty much the whole side of the sides template. If you want to make a pattern to give the inside of your tent a little more pizzazz, you go ahead and do you. All right, I'm gonna get these pieces cut out. On the side pieces, you'll see more dotted lines. So you're going to want to cut from the bottom up to the solid black. All right, I have everything all cut up. We are first going to work on making the top of the tent. This part's very easy. It says glue here. So right away, we'll put some glue right on that white space that says glue here. And then all you need to do is fold it around and you'll see it's coming to a point. So you'll fold it around and overlap just like that. And you're gonna wanna hold it down for a while, nice and tight so that glue solidifies and does its job. So hold that down. And just press it and squeeze it so it doesn't pop back up. If it does pop up, just gently peel it off and put a little bit more glue on there. All right, and then we can set that off to the side. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to glue our side pieces together. And where it says glue here, put the glue there. I just did one at a time to make sure the glue didn't dry. Glue stick, glue tends to dry quickly or 
if you use uh, liquid school glue, it could run as well. <laughs> you don't want that to happen. So we'll attach and overlap one side to the other and just like the top of the tent, squeeze it together and flatten it out. And then put glue on the other side, on the other tab that says glue here. And then you're gonna twist it around. Oops, whoops. <laughs> twist it around and overlap one with the other and squeeze and push it together. All right, you'll wanna let that dry for a few moments before we move on to the next part. All right, we've let that dry for a few moments. Now we are going to push the tabs down right where you've made all of those slits. We're gonna push them so they lay flat. They will overlap quite a bit because we're putting squares into a circle. So overlap them and push them down. Oop, that one I didn't cut quite far enough. I was going too fast. Hmm. You'll see how they're overlapping. And that is what we want. We want that overlap. That will help your tent stay nice and sturdy. All right, so we have more or less a circle. Kind of looks like a toilet paper roll of sorts. Now you're gonna take your two circles. I colored them the same color. Maybe you colored them different. And one is going to be on the bottom and one is going to be on top of the flap. So whichever one is going to go on the bottom, make sure whatever piece you colored lays flat on the ground. So the white is facing up. And you're going to put glue just all over that whole thing, all around inside, or get way around to the edges. And you're going to take your top part and you're going to line it up with the piece that you just glued. And this takes a little bit of eye and a little bit of patience. And it may not line up just perfect, and that's okay. Once you have it all lined up and spread out so it covers the outside of the circle, you're going to want to press it down just like that. All right, so now we have the bottom circle, just like that. And now the other circle, you're gonna put inside the tent. So whatever part you colored needs to be facing up. So put some glue on the bottom all the way around. Make sure you get the edges really well. And you're just gonna Gently press that in there so it goes all the way around the edges. And I have short fingers, so I use the glue stick to help press that down. Just like so. Whoop. And then you have the top and the bottom of the floor of your tent all put together. Just like so. So there's the bottom and the sides of the tent. Now this has had plenty of time to dry. So now we're gonna go and we're gonna fold all of these flaps down right on the solid line. All right, so I have all of the flaps folded down. Now I'm just gonna stick it right over the top and there is your tent. Now all of the animals can come and do different tricks. Hello, Seal, what are you gonna do for us today? Arr, 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 arr. I have a ball, arr, 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 arr. I'm rolling on a ball. I want to roll on a ball, Wee! Rolling around. Oh, here comes the elephant with the ring that he can twirl on his nose. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching today. I hope you enjoyed your grab and go bags this week. 
Have a wonderful rest of your day. Don't forget to sign up for our summer learning challenge so you can earn up to, I believe it's eight prizes. We have lots and lots of books to give away and lots of restaurant coupons for Culver's and Fazoli's and other restaurants around town, as well as some surprise grab bag prizes as well. So sign up, ask your adult to help you. You can do it online or you can request a paper copy from the library. And when you're ready to pick up prizes, you can make an appointment to come into the library or you can pick up your prize during curbside services, whichever is easiest for your family. Thanks again for watching. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.